Greetings Mech Warriors, and today I am going to go over the latest and greatest additions to Mech Warrior Online. Uh, for those that were here for my last uh, video, uh, uh, I forgot what mech it was. Um, anyway, with my, la with my last video, um, I had noted that I was going to do the Viper and the Cyclops, because those are the only mechs I've pre-ordered, and until uh, PGI makes some significant changes that I'm just not going to go over in depth. Uh, I am not going to be pre-ordering any more mechs. I mean, I've dropped a stupid amount of money on this game. Uh, and by stupid amount, I mean like in, you know, multiple thousand dollars um, since I started playing in 2013. And well, I'm just tired of 12 versus 12 team deathmatch. To get me started on the status of action warfare, they gotta make some fundamental changes to encourage more variety in game. That's all I'm really gonna say on it. So, it'll be Viper and Cyclops, and that'll be it for me on these types of videos. But of course, in the future, I might, you know, still do something with the add really cool feature like they did um, with this match actually. Um, they made some significant changes to Viridian Log and uh, you'll see that in the uh, in the accompanying video with the uh, when, I, when I take Vex for a spin. Uh, but they've also added decals which is something that folks have been asking for quite some time. And so I'm going to also take a look at that right now, let's go ahead and focus on the Viper. Viper is a 40 ton medium mech. Uh, it will be the first clan Omni mech hero. And so looking at it, um, I, I actually like the way this looks. I, I saw the past artwork for it, and oh my god, it looked like ass. I'm not, no bones about it. The, th the thing looks like a rack. So I, I got to hand it to the art team that EGI has hired in designing the d designing this to take a mech design that physically looks terrible and make it into something that looks really cool. Um, so yeah, uh, and this is the Viper Prime, uh, the special edition. So, yeah, um, let's take a look at what this guy has to offer. Uh, two medium pulse lasers, uh, two clan machine guns, whoopee, uh, AMS, and an SRM-4 with one, two, three, uh, with a lot of jump jets. Holy crap. Um, and, you know, decent base armor, I guess. Um, yeah, uh, it gives you about maximum armor on all locations, so... Base loadout, I don't think it's terrible. Uh, have to see how it performs uh, with a XL 320 engine, and you're looking at a little 130 uh, kph. So be really nice when you're running uh, when you got speed tweaks. So yeah, uh, let's uh, see some quirks. Um, acceleration rate, deceleration rate, turn rate, torso twist. Wow, and this guy can really move. In that regard, uh, meh. Basic energy and missile cooldown. Um, the Viper A. That, uh, okay. Set. Looks like he has the same uh, acceleration and deceleration stuff, but with a 5% heat generation. Um, and that's the base color scheme. It looks good. Uh, if I remember correctly, yeah, there is no uh, specialized geometry anymore. I don't know if you're able to catch that changeover. Yeah, there is no specialized geometry anymore. Uh, again, I understand why they did this, but it still gives me a sad. Eh, whatever. Um, loadout SRM6. It's your laser boat right here, guys. Uh, <laughs> and. That. Interesting, because I know that uh, they were talking about uh, 
reworking the Omnipods such that uh, the a lot of your quirks were based on the center torso rather than say an arm. And it looks like that's what they have here. So I don't know what that. Uh, I'm I'm gonna blast over these quirks to see where it goes. Again, just like the Prime has just about maximum armor on all locations, so to me that is a good thing. Uh, the Viper uh, B, uh, same basics, they have more range and more ER, ooh, high cut the PPC velocity there. And yeah, the layout's gonna be pretty much the same, so I'm just curious what, uh, there, okay, so they are on the Omnipod still. I, w I wonder if those go away if they switch out. Uh, oh well. Uh, again, you know, here's another energy boat, so... Yeah. <sighs> this is something else that just kind of grinds my gears a little bit, is... Energy boats are the new meta. Um, well, I should say they're not the new meta, but for the old meta. Especially lasers, but I know that uh, various ballistics are starting to pick up popularity um, and if you notice I've already you know started looking at where the quirks are and what the quirks are and such and uh, it, this I think the, the quirkening thing is, is kind of hurting the gameplay overall this is you know, listen to folks on who have spoken on the matter online in the forums they've for all intents and purposes, have stated that with the rescaling and some other changes that's happened, that maybe Quirk should go away and that PGI should take a new look at balancing and rather than balance mechs, balance weapons. Uh, because, you know, if you look at, you know, a lot of folks are looking at, you know, various weapon systems and going, why do all these weapons have, you know, like a 10% range or a 10% cooldown? And if that's your base default uh, thing, then just you change the base weapon. And I, I can't disagree with that. I, I think the weapons, I think the weapons should be balanced first, and then and then the mechs as needed because folks have noted a certain power creep and. You know, I I can't say they're mistaken. I don't as much, even though I don't play as much anymore. Uh, I've noticed that there are certain mechs that you almost always see in <clears throat> in faction warfare, and that there are certain mechs you almost always see in the uh, the public queue, and that's based on what's good. And the thing is, is I shouldn't. I shouldn't sit down and look at a mech, you know, based on how awesome it is and, and gameplay-wise. I should judge it more of based on what's fun. And unfortunately, and things have gotten to this point where what's fun isn't necessarily what will win matches. And while I'm not a comp player by any means. I, I don't like to lose, <laughs> and I don't like to lose consistently, because losing consistently isn't fun. So, I, I think there needs to be some sort of balance involved here. Um, you know, looking at, say, Guild Wars, it's another game that I play, Guild Wars 2, uh, their stance is, you know, all the classes are viable, uh, they're not overpowered, per se, uh, and they're constantly tweaking stuff, and I get that PGI's tweaking stuff here too, but I, I just I don't think they have a good understanding of what balance is and how and, and how it applies, you know, making one mech more viable than the other. You know, I, I should I, I should look at a Viper and go, man, I really want to pilot this. And look at the shadow. Look at my shadow hat, my shadow cats, or storm crows, or you know what other uh, other mechs I have in my 
drop deck and play based on those instead and then you can see it right here I have a lot of invalid builds because I don't play these max for any given reason heck you look at my ice ferrets I sold all my ice ferrets I I'm hanging on to the Novas for some stupid reason same thing with the shadow cats but you see these all these invalid builds that's because I've stripped everything out I'm not going to use them and I think that's the wrong answer. I, I think that I I should look at a mech and go, why should I pipe? Instead of asking me why should I drive this, it should be why shouldn't I? And every mech should have the same viability based on weight class uh, and, and play style. And I and I think PGI is really They've got one. They've gotten away from it, and two, there is a sense of power creep. Uh, I personally don't see it, but then again, I also don't play as often, and you know, I'm definitely not one of the cool kids. So, uh, that being said, if there's enough folks saying that there's power creep going on that are far more knowledgeable in the fact than I am, then. Uh, I guess I just gotta take them at their word for that. But anyway, I know I've rambled quite a bit. Let's take a look at the Medusa, which this is the uh, first Omni Mech hero. And I have a feeling that the cool stuff about hero mechs, they're going to treat basically how they've done with the special edition primes, uh, where your 30% C build bonus is tied to the center torso, and I'm going to assume that the arm, that the uh, limbs are going to be interchangeable with no boss. Good three small lasers, a streak six, side torso, and three small lasers. I, th I think this, actually looking at it, this base build. Um, I think it's pretty solid as is. This is just a knee-jerk reaction here for me. Because small pulse la small lasers, they, they hit hard. I mean, this is basically, this loadout here just tells me that this is something that's supposed to be basically a shoot and scoop. Come in, you know, kidney punch you, then dart away as quickly as possible. Um, and the quirks, uh kind of back that up with the improved rate laser range heat generation so you know throw on some uh, throw on throw on some uh, <clears throat> make those medium lasers or small pulse lasers or heat sinks or something and yeah I think you'll you can have something that's uh, pretty nasty now I'm going to go ahead and shift back to the default prime here and take a look at the new decals now I don't think I, yeah, I know I, I knew I didn't have any uh, decals opened up, but uh, so let's take a look at this. I, you know, I have to buy some of them, so okay. Uh, okay. Gotta be careful where you put stuff. Interesting. Okay. And this is kind of neat. Uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. It seems to be okay. Round, okay. Interesting. Okay. So we have freelancer, loyalist, mercenary, Ace Darwin's Fitz. Pound puppies. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm guessing that's a uh, cannon uh, unit. Always faithful. Arcadians, Avanti Angels. Yeah, these look like uh, classic uh, Battletech units. Keep on that, I don't know a lot of them, but uh, I have a feeling that that's what these guys are uh, doing here. Yeah, because you got the house, you have your house Davian. And I 
guessing on some of these, it looks like, yeah, and I was told that you have one color channel to edit on some of these, okay. And I guess on others, not so much. Okay, so I can't edit, uh, interesting. Oh, no, no, I can. Nope. I cannot edit certain uh, things. I can, who's I can edit the... Uh... Huh. And this is going to be kind of neat to just uh, play around and look at. But looks like for our base decals, uh, we have your standard mercenary, then your units. Okay. And let's see what we have for the two wrenches. AC5 ammo. Okay. Angry face. Ha! Ah! Atlas. Okay. Huh. Okay. These are okay. These are your cheaper ones. The 180 MC. Okay. Now supposedly they're going to have some uh, some big ones. Uh, they're like going to be like 1250 or something. So. Splat. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Um. I ain't gonna lie. I'm. I am going to uh, be purchasing a bunch of these. I'm. Yeah. I, I'm. Definitely. I, I'm not gonna lie there. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that's. <laughs> that, that, that's all I can say. Uh, Cause. This is, I know that this has been something that folks have been asking for for quite some time. Uh, and I, I'm glad that they finally decided to implement it. So, in any event, uh, there you have it, folks. I know that this video has gone on quite a bit longer than what uh, I usually have it go for. Uh, and I attribute most of that to my rambling and you know, nerd rage. So to speak, but uh, either way, I hope you find this video entertaining and or, or enlightening, educational, whatever. And uh, anyway, I will see you next time, and well, I'll see you on the battlefield.